What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike Sasser, boudoir photographer in Los Angeles, California. And it is so good to be back on YouTube. I took a little bit of a break, organized some things. It's been a crazy time for everybody, but today I'm so excited to be bringing you a video that I've been meaning to do for a while that I think is really gonna help you out. That's right, today we are gonna to be talking about what makes a good photo, what makes a bad photo, what are the images that I call that my clients see, and what are the ones that they never see. Yeah, so if you didn't notice, uh, I'm in a completely new studio space. It has been amazing, I've had a blast shooting here, and I'm excited to bring you guys some tutorials from this new spot. So let's go ahead and just take a quick 30 second peek at, uh, at the new spot. That outdoor shower is a doozy. It makes the coolest images ever. So when I share these how-to videos, sometimes I'll get somebody to comment something like, uh, that girl's so hot, she would've looked good if you had taken that picture with a potato. All right, now arch your back a little bit more. That's good, point your toes a little bit. Now I have a potato in my office. And basically what I'm hearing when you say that is that you find this person attractive pretty much no matter how she's standing, no matter what the picture looks like, which is great. But even still, if you put two pictures side by side, there will be certain elements of one that you'll connect with more. Either it'll be more pleasing in a certain way or more interesting or capture more of your attention or it'll convey more of what you're trying to. So that's what we're gonna focus on in this little video, the details in between two different photos. All right, so same as my last place, what I recommend is that you guys just get some shears. I haven't drilled into the walls here yet, so I just got these compression rods and then I can slide this over and all of a sudden we have this big fancy Nice softbox. So this software is called Photo Mechanic. I have loved Photo Mechanic and it has completely changed my business. It has allowed me to do same day sales sessions. Because it is so much faster for culling and kind of going through the pictures, it has allowed me to import, cull, edit and show the images to my clients in about an hour, which has allowed me to do these same day sales sessions that has increased my average sale by a ton. So I highly recommend taking a peek at the software. So Amanda was nice enough to come out and be a little guinea pig for this shoot. So when I'm going through these photos, I'm looking for good expressions, good connection to the camera. I'm looking for natural movement. I'm looking for strong poses. I'm looking for interesting light. And if there's an example of a photo that does one of those things better than the previous, I am going to hold only onto that one photo. I use a star system, so if I tap the number one, that's going to give this photo a one star. That's how I'm going to organize them. This photo, however, her eyes are closed. I'm not gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna explain the first couple, and then I'm just gonna go through at my normal, typical speed. So we're not gonna do this one. Uh, this one is kind of an in-between expression. This one, I absolutely love. Anytime you've got the eyelashes, here, uh, there's movement, there's movement in her hair. She looks natural. We've got good light on her skin. We're keeping it. Let's keep going. This one, again, not exactly. This one's okay. This one's better. This one's super cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. Anytime they're playing with their fingertips and their mouth, anything like that, super cute. We're gonna keep clicking through. This is kind of an in-between expression. This one I like kind of even more. Let's go ahead and do that one. And then this one, eyes into the camera. You can totally do an eyes looking towards the camera, an eyes looking away from the camera. The more variety that you're able to send to your clients, the more you'll be able to sell those pictures. If you've got two pictures that are almost identical, you don't wanna put those two in there side by side because um, it might overwhelm them, they won't know what to choose, and you want their energy focused on just feeling good looking at the pictures and having enough variety that they can go through and choose multiple photos. So we'll keep going. This one's pretty, I'll put that in the S pile for now. That one I like a lot. Okay, so here's a one and here's one. These are relatively similar, but I like that we can see more of her face in this one. So we're gonna choose this one. We're gonna take this one out. Let's keep, well, that one's actually even better. So I'm gonna take this one out. See how she's breathing through her mouth a little bit? That's a little bit more natural. She looks a little bit more comfortable in this one. That's an okay expression. That's probably a little bit better expression. Uh, okay, so now we've changed up our angle. So that one, maybe we can get two or three or four photos out of. Now we're in a whole different pose. Now we're gonna take a look at these and see in what ways we can get some variety out of this. So that one, I love. 
We'll go ahead and keep going. These are all pretty similar. That's just a vertical version. See how this one, the light's not as much on her face. I like this better that her, her face shows up uh, on her skin. The light pops a little bit more. That's something that I'm gonna hold on to. We're gonna keep going. These are okay. Also, I've realized how much more tame I shoot for, <laughs> for YouTube than I do for my regular clients. Like this is a fine pose. This is a good one to start off with, but um, but I always try and keep it tame, keep things relatively PG-13, PG-12 for you guys. But if you hop over my Instagram, you'll see uh, a little bit more true to what I normally shoot. Kind of click through. These are okay, but I don't love them. This one's okay. I'm gonna keep going. This one I like. Okay, see how this one's more interesting? That one's okay. If we go, so we can see her eyes a little bit more in this one. And in this one, her hand's kind of dark. So we don't need, uh, we're gonna skip this one. But you can see these two pictures are relatively similar. You might say, should I show both of them? Why, um, why would you complain about one photo over another? But what you're doing is you're trying to find the absolute best one to share with the client. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and click through. Mm, I'm okay with these. I don't love what's going on with her leg here. I kind of wish this one was in front. Um, that one's okay. Uh, that's cute with a smile. We got our camera gal in the background there. Um, that's kind of cute. I like that. I love the motion. Even if this is out of focus, I'm going to turn this in black and white and she's going to love it. All right, I just wanted to jump over and show you in Lightroom real quick just how easy it is to take an out of focus picture and, and make it artistic and something the client will like. Now, first of all, you probably shouldn't have this problem if you're using like a a mirrorless camera with eye autofocus, but since I'm in manual focus, this can happen sometimes. So I'll just go over and I'll choose one of these uh, black and white presets. That one looks amazing. Already it looks artistic. Then we're gonna grab a little grain here. Maybe we may boost that grain even a little bit more. Boost that grain a little bit more and you're pretty much set. And that's how you take an out of focus picture and make it artistic. Ooh, this is a good little, little fierce expression. This I really like. I like the chin up better than the chin down. Let's see what else we can see. Uh, this is cute. That one's pretty good. These are all look kind of out of focus. This problem with shooting manual focus camera. Let's see. That's good, I like that. This one, I feel like her arms is like a little too big. Um, the sweater here, so. All right, let's take a look at these. Okay, pretty simple, playing with the hair, throw your hair to the side. One one tip for you guys that I'll do is I'll ask them to do an action and then I'll take pictures while they're doing it. So I'll say, throw your hair to that side and then they'll go through and they'll kind of shake their hair out. And that's when I take the picture of them here. And it works really well because all of a sudden they stop thinking about what's going on with their face and trying to like make some type of expression and they start to do the natural thing. Uh, whereas if you say, hey, put your hand in your hair, it just doesn't, <laughs> It just doesn't look that natural. People don't people don't know how to do that naturally. So if you can just have them do an actual action, it's gonna come through really naturally in your pictures. That's okay. This one's better. This one's even better. So we're gonna take this one out. We'll keep going. I like this. Oh, but with the lips open, I like I like breathing. You gotta be breathing <laughs> during your shoots. All right. Here's another close up one, that's pretty good. All right, let's skip ahead. Here's pretty good. All right, looking straight ahead, I really like that. All right, now you know how to get the most out of your pictures during the shoot to choose the best photos out of the series. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and take a quick look at my editing, see how you can get the most out of your images in the least amount of time. So the first thing I always do is go ahead and use one of my presets. This one looks pretty good. We're gonna boost the exposure just a little bit. And honestly, that looks pretty good. I may punch a little pink in there. Uh, I use Shift M all of the time, all of the, all of the time. We're just gonna brighten up her face a little bit. Wow, look at that. And then in this situation, we're just gonna darken this background area just a touch. There we go. About 10 seconds, you get your edit. Let's take a look at this one. We'll do it again. We'll take a look at our preset options. This one's pretty nice. Ooh, this one's super dreamy. Let's bring our highlights down a little bit. Love that, and our overall exposure. Beautiful. Let's keep rolling. One more time, our preset. We're gonna drop our highlights a little bit, and I just want a little bit more life in her hand. Just bring that up a little bit, and then same with this part of her outfit. 
we're just gonna brighten this up a little bit. There we go. This is really good. Let's go ahead and do that preset again. I'm kind of digging this one and we'll just cool it off just a touch. Beautiful. Just trying to even out a little bit of the light on her face there. Highlights down just a touch, bam, I like that. Let's go here, we'll do one more. Brighten it up, push a little pink and brighten her face. And I also like to straighten it. Gotta straighten your photos, guys. <laughs> Ooh, this is kind of cold and moody. I like this. What I like about these is you can boost it to give it even a little bit more extreme look, kind of depending on what it is you're looking for. Highlights down so we don't blow out those highlights and then just brighten up her face just a little bit. So there's a little welcome back video, but if YouTube isn't quite enough for you, I've got two avenues, two options for you guys that I think is really gonna help you out. The first is gonna be my VIP Facebook education group. So what I love about this is it's a community that we're building. So anybody can ask a question and everybody jumps in to hop in and help answer it. I can be a little bit more personal there, but I wanna be very clear, this is not a group to just share pictures that you've taken. All the topics discussed are business related on how to grow your boudoir business. So if you've ever imagined boudoir as a career, that's the place to go. The second thing is with Facebook, with Instagram, with YouTube, there are limits to what I can share with you guys. And I'm opening up an exclusive newsletter that will allow me to share things that I couldn't normally share on a platform like this. So I'll see you in the Facebook group, I'll see you in the newsletter, and I'll see you in the next video.